getting a chance to be part of the Southern Brave again, I guess the next step is the your experiences in the hundred and an elevated standard because you've got fewer teams, you've got more overseas players being allowed to come in and be part of the squads. So for you being able to be a teammate of Smriti Mandana and Stefani Taylor of the West Indies, who is again a marquee player in your side. So two pretty big international <laughs> names. I don't want to leave her out. Amanda Jade Wellington too. She's she's you in can't the- leave well out. Well. Yeah. Uh, so you had you had a pretty stacked roster. Danny Wyatt's in there. Sophia Dunkley. Uh, yeah, so yeah, a very good team. Deep roster to say the least with all the furor about the hundred why are they tearing up the established way of doing things and this hundred is pointless i think one of the things that was celebrated about the hundred was its impact on women's cricket specifically it seemed like it did a huge amount for the exposure having those double headers side by side with women and men were were playing at the same venue and that extra exposure uh, for the women was significant and the attention and, and just the recognition of the standard of play. Like I said, a lot of people were not so high on the 100 beforehand, but for you getting a chance to be part of it and the experiences that you got to go through over the course of the summer, what was the 100 like from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I thought the KSL was brilliant, but oh my gosh, the 100 was, it was next level. It was amazing for both the men's and women's game. I think the biggest thing was the crowds. You know, no way would I have dreamt of playing in front of 26,000 people uh, in a 100 final game, which is just absurd, really, for a domestic player. For, again, for a nobody, really, to, to be in that situation was just crazy, uh, especially at Lords. And yeah, just in terms of the women's game, um, the awareness, you know, I had people messaging me who I'd not spoken to for years saying, I've never liked cricket, I've never watched in my life, but I love the 100. And actually, I got a, I've got heard a lot of good feedback. I don't think I heard a lot of negative stuff apart from maybe potentially slightly older, more traditional cricket fans. But, you know, I had so many amazing, lovely messages um, from people who absolutely love the 100. Just watching young girls who had, you know, Lauren Bell T-shirts on or Sophia Dunkley T-shirts on. They didn't want the men's tops, one of the women's tops. Um, it was just brilliant. And there was one moment when, obviously, it was a double header, uh, which worked so, so well. There was a moment when, kind of half the players we were walking back to our hotel and we walked by the ground and all of a sudden the crowd stands up starts cheering starts applauding starts whistling doing everything and we sort of are looking around thinking oh like has there been a boundary like what are they cheering for uh, and they were cheering for us and it's one of those moments which was very naive of us and quite sweet and innocent really thinking oh my gosh they're cheering for us like that's crazy and so for the next few home games every time we walked back to the hotel we said no no let's go this way just because it was just so much fun. And again, just having that, again, we were, you know, we're just county domestic cricketers. Um, but you see people with signs with your names on. Even just speaking to the England girls, they said, you know, we would never get a crowd like this, even for an international game, which is just crazy. And the stats for the audiences and the crowds that we had were just, God, it's just amazing what the game did, you know, particularly for the women's game and the awareness. You know, and I, I hope that it just continues to go, to, to progress. And yeah, the double headers work so well. Um, and having, I think, having a franchise link to the men as well really helped the game. And I think just the amount of funding and marketing that was put into it, it couldn't not go well. I know there's a lot of skeptical and and some, um, you know, some people not the biggest fan of it to start with. But the amount of money they invested and and the way it was so, it was so ran so well, and the marketing behind it, it it was brilliant. Yeah, it was an amazing opportunity, amazing experience, and hopefully it's it's something I can be involved with for a few years. Are you a Palm Bear loyalist for life now? A Palm Bear? Do you know, we didn't get any Palm Bears. Um, what? Maybe I know, maybe that's the one flaw. There was, yeah, no Palm Bears, not a Palm Bear in sight, actually. Look, playing for the Brave was absolutely amazing. I would love to play for the Brave again. Um, but I think what's really exciting about this is that there's the opportunity with the money as well that you can chop and change and it's very flexible you know it's a four-week comp you can play for a different team you could play up north down south you know wherever but yeah playing for playing for the Pom Bears for the Brave was absolutely brilliant and obviously you know being, playing under Charlotte Edwards as well he's my Vipers my Vipers coach as well was very special and yeah being being on her team is is one of the best things ever. I want to ask about Charlotte Edwards there's a yeah. few points about her, but before that, one other quick point, again, going on 
a thing you raised in the previous answer before the palm bear reference <laughs> review not aware the palm bears with it was the snack the crisp brand that was on the front of the so. southern brave jersey you mentioned lords you had never played there before this summer there was no, the group stage match against the london spirit and then the final against the invincibles you've mentioned the crowds being able to play at lords not just lords but being able to play at lords in front of a huge crowd give us a sense of the kind of crowds if there were any that you were playing in front of in your previous seasons and then the transformation that took place this past summer and and just mentally what is that like to go from the crowds or lack thereof before this past summer and being able to play in front of the crowds were you able to tune it out and block it out and just focus on the task game or what or did you catch yourself at times going oh my god where did all these people come from and i better perform or else who knows who's watching yeah the crowds aren't forgiving at all they're not forgiving <laughs> yeah i rec- i think previously maybe the most i've ever played in front of is maybe 6,000 people at Hove for a KSL final, which again, I came on as like a, a fielder sub for a player that had to go off. So I was maybe there for like 10 overs. I was thinking for an even game, thinking, wow, this is this is pretty cool. And then obviously because of the pandemic, we'd played a whole summer without crowds, you know, family weren't even allowed to come on the ground, which was a massive shame. So I think maybe because of that as well, it was just an added bonus of, oh my gosh, there's 26,000 people here. Or I think the first game at Trent Bridge might've been 16,000 people. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It was so loud. There was music going on and being on the pitch. I mean, there's a lot of noise, but it's good noise. It's good energy. And I think the crowd picks up the energy really well. So it, you know, I, I thought it was brilliant. I love being around it. And yeah, the Lord's final was just crazy. You know, having my parents and my, my sister there was, was really special. They don't get to watch me often. So the fact that they were there watching me at Lord's, which is something which we'd kind of spoken about, you know, for years. I'd said, you know, you're going to watch me play at Lord's one day. Just, just watch was really special obviously it wasn't the result that we wanted I think yeah when the pressure comes on I remember when I was batting in the final it was just silence I'm sure there's a lot of noise but I don't remember any of that I just remember just trying to watch the ball I just remember Danae Van Nier kept bowling at me thinking right <laughs> wait for the spin wait for the spin and just channeling in and just zoning in for the moment and trying to just trying to hit the ball basically but yeah the noise the, the atmosphere is is crazy I, I can't explain it 